We begin out west with our team qualifiers from the California region. Our first squad is a national at-large entry. They have recreated the gold standard in California since 2016, earning Division I state player finishes six of the last seven years, including three state championships. In 2019, this crew was fifth at NXN and last year placed third, making their fourth appearance at Nike Cross Nationals, led by El Lamelli, Pierre Tarosian, and Molly Sundgren. This is Clovis. Our next squad is the newly minted state champion in California Division One, earning their first title in state history last weekend. Also the Inland Empire Challenge champions, runners up at the Mount Sac Invitational. They feature one of the top juniors in America in Riley Blade and also showcase Brandon Cole and Madeline Siena making their first appearance at NXN. This is Corona. the top entry from the California region, coming off record-breaking staking performances for a low score and fastest team time ever in Division IV history, winning the team title by more than 100 points. Last weekend, Summer Wilson, Sophie Pollet, Caleb Tasser, and Brynn Garcia each earned All-State honors to continue the dream season here to Portland, making their second consecutive appearance at NXN. The California Region Champions, this is San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> California with six individuals, one at-large qualifier. Already introduced earlier as a team competitor, Riley Blade. She was a California Division I state champion. Additional state champions in the field. Division II champion, one of the top runners in the country, and only a junior, Sadie Engelhard. Also a special talent from California. She's only a junior, and she's already in a rare group. She's already a three-time California state champion out of Santa Rosa area. Out of Division Three state champion, Hannah Thompson. Our team from California.
covering the move by Forsyth is Elizabeth Leachman, the Texas 5A champion, the sophomore. So uh, this battle, which was not seemingly a battle in the early going, is going to be a race. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we saw this is going to be a race between Forsyth, Leachman, and
of all the most confident of all is going to celebrate as a Nike Cross National Champion. This is Addie Ritzenheim. That was a brilliant race by Addie through the motion there. Can't believe that she won. She was 39 from the Hall Senior. Give her loads of encouragement. What great sportsmanship. Look at this battle coming down the last stages as Isabella Laurie doing battle there oh. with Wisniewski leaving it on wow. empty as they get down at the ground. Forsyth guts the effort for her. She will finish in the top five as they get Wisniewski third, Laurie fourth, and the eighth grader Gianna Raymer finishing in sixth. Yes, and Elizabeth Leachman finishes 15th after going out so hard at the beginning of this race. Allie Zeeland only 13th. So a couple of the big names a little bit further down the leaderboard. But now we really have to kind of sweat out how the team result will go between Niwot and Academy. But it's going to be answered pretty quick, Tom, because the, all of their runners were in like the top 30 or 40 places. Yes. Seen a lot of orange coming in right now, and I think both of their kids were that lowest. Yes, they were. Yeah, the lowest team score to win was back in 2010 with 27 by Manlius. That's not going to be the uh, winning score today, but it'll still be a competitive one. There is real-time adjustments Ooh. up the scoring. Academy with 61, Niwak with 72. So if, if these scores hold, I was able to move up over that last day, but it just wasn't going to be enough. Academy was able to stay strong and I think even improved with maybe two spots. But similar to the boys' race, we would have a double champion, or first and second place from the same state. Well, look at Academy there. All those green arrows showing yeah. up. So four of their five runners doing what you need your team to do up and down the board. Move up in the standings where you can. Hook with really maybe the decisive move in that third position, gaining 12 to offset four or five on the Niwot side, also improving, but all in single digits. So Cook may get a team MVP on that third performance. Both teams executed incredibly well over that last day, but Academy was just able to execute a little better. Like you said, the third runner passing 12 spots. I mean, we saw that with uh, the women's race at NCAA a few weeks ago with I think a lot of their, you know, few of their runners 
Uh, we were able to pass a lot of people over that last day. That's different than winning that title. But one of the things that really strikes Johnny! me is parentheses, the top 14 Johnny! fall from that southwest region. And on the boys' side, the same thing. Just incredible depth in that region. Colorado and Utah just dominating on both the boys' and girls' side this year. Yeah. Well, credit to decision makers who are afforded that option, like the football bowl committee, you know, trying to choose those at-large teams for, for the, how they think they will perform on this national stage, and giving one region two, that's a, but at least validated here unofficially with the top four, including those two at all making the top four here in First up, we're going to bring our three individuals up on stage. Emily Wisniewski, Bethany Holland, and Addie Ritzenheim. First, third place at the State of Oregon, a junior, time of 17.37.4, Emily Wisniewski. Olympian. We're here at this at the finish. Okay, first off, uh, Emily. The, uh, the girls race. As far as the race today, of course, it's going to be a bit more chopped up than it was for the boys' race. How tough was it out there today? Did your strategy change at all? Uh, conditions coming in? What was the plan for you? Okay, third place, Emily Wisniewski out of Oregon. Our national runner-up, she was also our top returnee from last year, out of the state of Colorado, also competing for her team, Academy. Second in a time of 17, 16.4, making the presentation, Lincoln Cole Hawker. So Bethany, how tough, how challenging was that race today? Compare and contrast last year's race to this year as far as your approach. I think it's definitely more challenging today. There was like some lakes and ponds and like marshes practically. So totally different race plan. I went into it honestly with like no individual goal and I knew it was just gonna be a challenge out there, especially with the team race. So as far as the conditions go, I just knew that everybody had the same conditions, so just like give it your all no matter what, and obviously I'm happy with the Okay, Bethany Mahalik, our national runner-up out of Academy. And finally, our 2023 national champion, a very familiar last name, Ritzenheim, of course, his dad, Nathan Ritzenheim, very famous in business running circles. Addie, were you thinking the possibility of an individual national title? When is the first time during the race when you begin to think about the possibility of winning the national individual championship? Um, definitely when I like took the lead, I would say, or just like um, when I would start getting ground. Yeah. So, out of curiosity, your dad, obviously very, very famous back in his day. What advice do you have for you coming to today? Outstanding. Once again, our 2023. Third place, scoring 163 points from Colorado, it's Denver.
Okay, our first place team you mentioned is Denver. Hey, you need to go first for a few minutes. So coming in. How confident was your team going? Yeah, I think we to be to be to Thank you. 